dear students of class 9 welcome to you all i like to discuss the last part of the chapter the french revolution the year 1789 in france so many changes in the lives of men and women what are the changes we see after the french revolution of 1789 we know that the people could express their opinion freely it was previously in the old regime people could not express their ideas through their pamphlets books or newspapers which was put into censors by the monarchs and now after the bastille fort was demolished on 14 july 1789 now this censorship was also abolished people now could express their opinion freely through the pamphlets books newspapers and magazines etc so this is a great changes we see and also the another important change brought by declaration of rights of men and citizen it did declare the all men have an equal right to well being and pursuit of happiness it is alienable right man would man could people could express their opinion freely they have freedom of speech freedom of expression and freedom of association so this is the most important changes we see in the gradual we see moreover the another changes we can see that the the people could express their opinion it is the most important thing they are enjoying the right of liberty equality and fraternity so these changes this is the great changes we see that the people now could express their opinion freely and many new ideas were published people could publish their ideas could express their opinions which has published in the newspapers and thus their the debate among the people began and now people could this is the sign of democracy it is a democratic rights which was enjoyed by the people after the french revolution now what was the legacy of the french revolution what we have inherited after the french revolution the french revolution was an epoch making event it was a one of the greatest event that shook the convulsed the entire world it brought about liberty equality and democratic rights the most important changes it introduced liberty equality fraternity and democratic rights among the people of the world we see that the we know that this is the most important thing is that previously the people could not express their opinion now after the declaration of rights they could express their opinion freely and the most important thing is that democratic rights was established people you know that could express people the people's power was given privileges previously society the the nobility the clergyman enjoyed all the sorts of economic social and political privileges now the most important democratic rights most of the however we see that the this type of democratic rights or ideal of idea of nationalism also inspired the people of other countries of the world to fight against the despotic power or monarchical power so we see that in this way the most important changes we can see in the form of revolution in the colonial countries which were they got inspiration from the french revolution the revolution idea of liberty equality and fraternity and so now now our next chapter is the chapter that is to socialism in europe and the russian revolution because i why i started in this way because there is a close link between the two chapters we see that the in the beginning we see liberals radicals and conservatives similarly we have discussed in the early chapters liberal national liberalism and conservatism so that's why it is the um, however what do we say 
in this chapter we see that earlier in the 18th century the france was divided into three estates clergy nobility and the common people and now after the french revolution in the uh, we see that the later the gradually the privileges of the uh, the that is the clergyman and nobility were abolished and now the people began to express their opinion so what we see a political transformation a transformation in political ideas in europe began and although it it was not a radical actually it began slowly so we see that the new political ideas new types of idea new political ideas new trend political trends emerged in europe and in india we see this type of political trends was also encouraged inspired the raja ram mohan rai and henry louis vivi and de rosio raja ram mohan rai you know was a great champion of modernism and also he was a great admirer of the french revolution and similarly the de rosio de rosio and his young bengal group was a great supporter of the french revolution and they were inspired they took inspiration from the ideal of liberty equality and fraternity which they wanted to introduce among the young generation of students that is called young bengal now the instead that the what are the new political trends liberals radicals and conservatives first i like to discuss the liberals liberals actually they who sub who actually are tolerated all sorts of religious ideas they are tolerant and uh, we know that at that time europe was divided into different religious groups namely protestantism and catholic christianity was divided into two major groups protestant catholic protestantism and catholic church we know that the england was a great supporter of the protestantism and they founded a anglican church a church of england while austria and spain founded catholic church so so in the still we see that the, there are different communities different types of religious ideas still this type of people supported the religious tolerance and we see that the they also supported the elected representatives and a parliamentary system and and also the however the important thing is that they were they were not democratic they did not believe in democratic rights that is they gave the, the voting right was not given to all that is universal suffrage right universal suffrage was given only to the propertied man and women were not, not allowed to vote so that that is the most important thing however they were against the monarchical powers and uh, radicals radicals we see that the they were in favor they supporter of the democratic rights and uh, we see that the they wanted to so the people could establish their democratic rights in in the in their own areas and uh, we see that the, they they opposed all sorts of privileges of the feudal lords and clergymen and also they were against the monarchical powers and these radicals believed in radical changes or revolutionary changes in the society but they it is the so liberals believed in slow changes whatever it may be the radicals was much more so the you see that the they actually supported of the nationalism and democratic rights now conservatives conservatives actually who believed in traditional customs the traditional rights and uh, beliefs that is the, they are known as conservatives the conservatives actually they uh, in the before the 18th century we see the conservative did not believe that the, their is that they did not believe in changes in the society and also but after the in the beginning of the 19th century they uh, realized that some sort of changes are necessary in, uh, in the society or for their you know that in order to because in 1815 the vienna congress was held in austria then in 1815 and all the autocratic monarchs or despotic monarchs assembled there and they are known as conservatives the monarchical power or power they are known as conservatives and they actually realized gradually that some sort of reforms some sort of changes are necessary in order to carry on their rule monarchical rule in europe 
and so on still they believed in slow changes gradual changes not radical changes so or quick changes so <clears throat> this is the idea of conservatism a conservatives so we have we find before the russian revolution the three types of political train existed there one was liberals radicals and conservatives now industrial society and social changes in russia now you know that the, there is a great deal of political transformation you know that already have discussed and similarly the, there was a change in the social and economic life the new cities came up towns and cities industrial regions were developed we see that the industrial revolution occurred and uh, this is how we see that the brought up this is naturally industrial revolution began in england in the mid of the 18th century and now uh, the people began to work in the factories men women and children were employed in the factories and there was no fixed hours the pay wages which was given was very low and they had to live in unhygienic condition the sanitary condition the working condition was very poor however this uh, now the liberals and the radical liberals and the radicals came forward to because uh, most of them were the property owners and they owned factories they now decided to uh, is that the change the condition of the working class so see that now it is said that if they wanted a, a good economic condition so that the lives of the people could change and uh, they according to them liberals and the radical the freedom of individuals was ensured if the poor could labor and those with capital could operate without restraint they believed that societies would develop clear and again i'm telling if freedom of individuals was ensured if the poor could labor and those the with capital could operate without restraint they believe that society would develop and now is it same is now as a result of it the at the time the working men and women who wanted changes in the society of the world in the in, in rallied or supported them supported the liberals and the radical groups or rallied around the liberal and radical groups now we see the what happened as a result of it the revolutionary movement began as a result of the you see that the changes the it uh, we know that it began in italy germany austria hungary and many other countries now it is called it is a see that the revolutionary movement and for example i can make unification movement in italy it was started by joseph it's a uh, guiseppe mazzini mazzini started the movement in italy and now we see that the the coming of socialism in europe now how did, did it come or what is socialism we know that socialism or against the owning of private property it is the you know that they did not believe that actually they Uh, oppose the any sort of any sort of owning private property any type of uh, see that the it is a, they were against the against the accumulation of wealth in the hands of a particular uh, individual and they believe that the if if the the factory owners who actually worked in the factories for for their individual gain individual profit who actually ran the ran the factory for the individual profit and they exploited the workers so in place of that they actually believe that the people should be given the right to carry on the production however initially the there is a idea of cooperative society It was introduced by robert wen it is called our it is called utopian socialism utopian meaning which does not really exist which is idealistic in nature the utopian meaning so utopian socialism what type of utopian socialism it was advocated was by robert wen and louis blanc robert wen an english manufacturer sought to build a cooperative society called a community society called new harmony new harmony at indiana indian in usa 
and now we see that the what is cooperative society when a group of people work together uh, in a particular uh, for profit or uh, for for the production of a for the uh, you see that the when a group of people work together for making profit of a particular thing or any crops or any production so this idea can be this i see that the that association can be called cooperative now we see that the louis blanc however uh, a frenchman he asserted that cooperative should not be built on individual basis cooperative should not be built on individual basis should be it would be promoted by the government initiative taken should be taken by the government government should take initiative to build cooperative and in however this is the idea in the beginning of cooperative society however we see that the what was the idea of karl marx and frederick engels you know that both are uh, you see that the supporter of communism karl marx was the propounder of communism and fred his friend frederick engels they you know that what they advocated that a society you see that the the society which is existing previously as a result of industrial revolution which was owned by the industrial industrial class and they are mainly concerned with the profit making they are exploiting the working class but instead of so they wanted that society would be based on so that which would be uh, you know that the production which, which would be distributed among the workers and workers you know that the capitalist class would not be could not own the industries industries would be run by the working class and it is the the their purpose was to establish a exploitation free society a society would be based on exploitation free a idea economic idea which was propounded by them that a economy that that type of economy which would which would actually Uh, you see that the uh, would be established in the country in the in a particular country which would be free from exploitation and industrial class would gain the profit and uh, you see that the this is how you see that the the new idea of communism uh, karl marx and frederick engels uh, initiated and now next day we will discuss the next topic that is a uh, it is our new topic that is a uh, the is the uh, which uh, that the social the in, uh, socialism in europe and the russian revolution so thank you all we shall meet you next day and clarify it if it necessary thank you all